10,000 crunches won't save you. Cutting calories to 800 a day won't fix it. Running till exhaustion won't touch it. Because the real problem isn't the belly you can see, it's the killer hiding underneath. Right now, deep inside your abdomen, there's fat strangling your liver, wrapping around your pancreas, squeezing your heart. The terrifying part? You could be thin everywhere else, lean arms, slim legs, defined jawline, and still be dying from the inside out. The medical term is visceral fat. Researchers found something even scarier. People who look perfectly healthy on the outside can have more of this deadly fat than someone clinically obese. Japanese scientists call this TOFI, thin outside, fat inside. It's arguably more dangerous than visible obesity because it goes completely undetected until serious health problems emerge. But those same researchers discovered while visceral fat is the most dangerous fat in your body, it's also the most responsive to the right approach. Not starvation diets, not extreme workout routines. A specific three-part protocol tested in multiple clinical trials across different populations. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through research-backed methods that helped participants reduce visceral fat significantly, methods involving colorful plant compounds that change gene expression, a specific type of tea that works at the cellular level, and a simple breathing test that tells you if you're exercising at the right intensity. Put the scale away. Stop the endless ab exercises. What I'm about to share could change everything you thought you knew about belly fat. Now, before we go any further, if you care about your health or someone you love, hit that subscribe button. We're building a community focused on real research, not quick fixes. Drop a comment below with your biggest health challenge and let me know what country you're watching from. Your engagement helps more people find this life-saving information. Visceral fat isn't like the fat on your arms or thighs. That surface fat, subcutaneous fat, is mostly passive storage. It sits there quietly, waiting to be used for energy when needed. Visceral fat is completely different in its behavior. It behaves like a diseased organ, actively pumping inflammatory chemicals called cytokines into your bloodstream every single day. It disrupts your hormone balance, insulin, leptin, cortisol, creating a cascade of metabolic problems. It drives insulin resistance, which paves the highway to type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Think of visceral fat as an internal parasite, latching onto vital organs and feeding off inflammation in your body. The more inflamed you are, the more it grows, and the more it grows, the more inflammation it creates. This creates a dangerous feedback loop that's difficult to break without the right approach. Here's a simple self-test you can do right now. Stand up and press your hand firmly on your stomach. Apply real pressure. If your belly feels soft, jiggly, easily compressed, that's mostly subcutaneous fat, the cosmetic kind that bothers you in photographs but isn't immediately life-threatening. But if your belly pushes outward firm and round, feeling hard or solid when you press, that's visceral fat. That firmness is internal pressure from fat packed around your organs. Your liver, pancreas, and intestines are being crushed from the inside, pushing against your abdominal wall, trying to find space. If you sit for more than six hours daily, or you've noticed energy dropping while your waistline expands, even though your diet hasn't dramatically changed, this message is specifically for you. Visceral fat doesn't care about outward appearance. It cares about your lifestyle patterns, stress response mechanisms, and what you feed yourselves at the molecular level. I'm not going to tell you to eat more vegetables. That's vague. We need precision to target the root cause of visceral fat, oxidative stress. Imagine your cells like car engines. When an engine runs too hot for too long, it develops rust. That cellular rust, oxidative stress, is what visceral fat thrives on. To eliminate the fat, we remove that rust. 
The most powerful rust removers in nature come from carotenoids, pigments that give plants vibrant colors. The deep orange in carrots, the bright red in tomatoes, the rich green in spinach and kale. Researchers in Japan conducted an eight-week randomized double-blind clinical trial with 28 obese men. They gave participants daily beverages containing carotenoid-rich vegetable pastes, specifically carrots and cabbage, along with kale in some groups. These vegetables are packed with lycopene, lutein, and beta-carotene. Results, published in Nutrients in 2020, showed remarkable findings. The carotenoids neutralized free radicals damaging cells, but they did something more remarkable. They influenced gene expression, activating genes responsible for burning fat while suppressing genes that store it. The outcome? Visceral fat levels decreased significantly in every single group after just eight weeks. This happened without dramatic calorie restriction or intense exercise programs. The participants simply consumed these carotenoid-rich vegetables daily as part of their regular routine. Your first protocol? Eat the rainbow, real food. Sweet potatoes, red and yellow bell peppers, spinach, butternut squash, carrots, tomatoes, kale. The rule? If your food is beige, bread, pasta, crackers, or chips, it's feeding the problem. If vibrant orange, red, green, or deep purple, it's fighting it. Your goal, add at least one deeply pigmented vegetable to every meal. Spinach and morning eggs, bell peppers and carrots at lunch, roasted sweet potato or squash at dinner. This creates your antioxidant shield. Now let's talk about a specific beverage that works like a key for your fat cells. You've heard green tea burns fat. Maybe you dismissed it as wellness hype. This isn't folklore, it's documented biochemistry. Green tea contains polyphenols called catechins. The most important is EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate. Think of your fat cells as having locked doors, normally shut, making it difficult for your body to access stored fat. Catechins help pick those locks. They stimulate your sympathetic nervous system to boost fat oxidation, telling your body to burn fat for fuel. But there's a second mechanism. They inhibit an enzyme called lipase in your digestive tract. Lipase breaks down dietary fat so your body can absorb it. When you drink catechin-rich tea, you're blocking fat absorption. A landmark 12-week study published in Obesity in 2007 tested 240 Japanese participants with visceral fat type obesity. One group consumed green tea with 583 milligrams of catechins daily. The control got only 96 milligrams. The results? The high catechin group showed significant decreases in body weight, body fat ratio, waist circumference, and visceral fat area, all while maintaining regular diet and physical activity. Another study from 2012 in the Journal of Functional Foods confirmed this with Chinese adults. After 12 weeks of approximately 609 milligrams of catechins daily, visceral fat area decreased significantly. Critical warning, you cannot buy sugary bottled green tea from convenience stores. Those are sugar water. You need matcha or high quality sencha tea. You're consuming the entire leaf, ground into powder or properly steeped, delivering concentrated catechins. There's synergy with natural caffeine. The caffeine revs your metabolic engine. The catechins provide fuel access. Together, a one-two metabolic punch. Your second protocol? Replace your second or third coffee with matcha green tea. No sugar, perhaps lemon for absorption. Keep it clean. Here's where everything changes. Diet helps overall weight loss, but research shows exercise is the precision weapon for visceral fat. The question, what type, how much, and at what intensity? A comprehensive meta-analysis published in PLOS One in 2013 examined 15 studies involving 852 participants. 
Researchers found exercise training without dietary restriction significantly reduced visceral fat. The landmark STRIDE study in the Journal of Applied Physiology followed 175 sedentary adults for six months. The control group, remaining inactive, gained visceral fat by 8.6%. But exercisers who worked out the equivalent of 11 miles per week prevented visceral fat accumulation. Those who exercised approximately 20 miles per week at moderate to vigorous intensity actually decreased visceral fat by nearly 7%. This happened without changes in caloric intake. A separate 16-week trial in medicine and science and sports and exercise compared a low versus high-intensity exercise in obese women with metabolic syndrome. Both groups expended 400 calories per session. The high-intensity group exercised above lactate threshold and showed greater reductions in total abdominal fat, subcutaneous fat, and visceral fat. So what intensity? you don't need marathon running. Excessive endurance training might raise cortisol. You need moderate to vigorous intensity. Use the talk test. If you can sing perfectly while exercising, too easy. If you're sprinting and can't gasp a single word, too hard. That's anaerobic. The sweet spot, you should speak in complete sentences, but sound noticeably winded, like you climbed three flights of stairs. You can talk if necessary, but you'd prefer not to. Breathing is elevated but controlled. That's your zone, where visceral fat reduction happens. Your third protocol, three to four sessions weekly, 45 minutes each. Cycling, brisk walking, swimming, rowing, hiking, the activity matters less than maintaining that breathing challenged intensity. When people want to lose belly fat, their instinct is starvation. They slash calories to 500 or 800 daily. They try extreme fasting without preparation. Here's the reality. Severe calorie restriction hits a wall. Your metabolism downshifts dramatically to protect you. Your body interprets starvation as famine and holds on to fat, including visceral fat. Exercise is different. Meta-analyses show exercise has a dose-dependent response for visceral fat. The more you do, the more you lose. No upper plateau like severe dieting creates. The winning strategy, eat enough nutrient-dense food, colorful carotenoids, quality proteins, healthy fats to fuel your body properly. Use strategic movement to create metabolic changes. Protocol 1. The Color Check. Look at your plate before eating. If mostly beige or brown, rethink it. Add one serving of deeply pigmented vegetables to every meal. Protocol 2. The Tea Swap. Replace your second daily coffee with matcha or sencha green tea. No sugar. Keep it clean. Protocol 3. The Breathing Test. Schedule three to four cardio sessions weekly, 45 minutes each. Use the talk test to ensure moderate to vigorous intensity. Consistency beats intensity. The best exercise isn't the one burning maximum calories on paper. It's the one you'll actually do three months, six months, a year from now. If you hate running, don't run. Try walking with a weighted backpack. Go swimming. Join a cycling group. Just maintain that talk test intensity regularly. Visceral fat drives almost every chronic disease, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, certain cancers, dementia. But your body wants to heal. You just need to send the right signals. Stop starving it. Start fueling it with the right nutrients. Support it with the right compounds and move it at the right pace consistently. If this video gave you clarity, hit that like button. Drop a comment, just type yes if you're starting this protocol. And if you know someone struggling with belly fat who doesn't understand visceral fat, share this video. Your health is everything, protect it. I'll see you in the next video.